a Super Bowl champion. He is a defensive end with the Miami Dolphins. Nine sacks. 12 passes defense last season, 18 sacks over the past two years. He was an All-American. He was an All-Big 12 player. He was a Big 12 co-defensive player of the year. He was the 32nd pick overall in 2016 out of Oklahoma State. Miami opening up against New England September 11th. That's going to be a big one right out of the box. Emmanuel Ogba joins me. Emmanuel, good to have you on the show. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Jeff. It's good to have you. Appreciate you. All right, so you're a few days away from vets reporting to camp. I'm kind of curious, what is this time of year like for you? For instance, are you trying to soak up the last few days of freedom, or are you fired up and ready to get after it right now? Um, I'm, I'm ready to go. I mean, I've been training this whole off season. I, know I took some breaks, and I, I traveled some different places, but yeah, it's, it's time to go. I had my camp last week, so I took a little bit of time off, you know, just spent time with the family before my camp, and, and now this week I've just been, been to find tune-ups. So. All right, so what about that? You re-signed with Miami in March. Did you give much consideration to looking around and seeing what else was out there, or was it always clear to you that you wanted to stay in Miami? I mean, I, I I told the media almost every time I interview. You know, my 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 goal is to to be here. You know, long term, I wanted to be here. You know, I wanted to be back with my team. Uh, but um, you know, I mean, we did. My 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 uh, agent was you know looking to you know kind of like seeing what 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 others out there you know during the whole negotiation period. But um, but I'm excited to sign with Miami. I mean, this is where I wanted to be. So. But not only that, but you were there when things started to turn. You're one of the reasons, yeah. to me, that things started to turn. Like, when you arrived with the Dolphins two years ago, they they were a certain way. Since then, you've had 18 sacks and have played a huge role in helping turn that thing around. I'm kind of curious, how did you go about playing a role in helping to change the environment and the culture and the vibe of the whole thing? Just, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I would say this, I'm not a real rah-rah guy, but I just, you know, tell the young guys, you know, just watch me at work and, you know, just follow, follow ahead and, um, and just, you know, bring that Chiefs mentality. And I, I've been around the Chiefs, you know, winning the Super Bowl. So I saw that mentality, how they work. So I kind of like brought that to the, to the Dolphins and I just pretty much just do my part. You know, that's why I'm, that's why I'm here, you know, just do my job and my responsibility. Emmanuel Ogba joining us. You mentioned the Chiefs. Also, I mean, we could talk more about the defense, and we will, but what about the offense? There's a lot of talent offensively on that team, and the team has been really proactive in adding talent with guys like Tyreek Hill. You, of course, played with him in Kansas City. So what's it like to have him in Miami, and then how good can this offense be this season? I would say this, man. We got some speed. <laughs> we got some speed. Uh, knowing Tyreek in college and also playing with him in Kansas City, um, rather play with him than against him, I'll tell you that. But I'm excited the way the offense is going. I mean, we can only be as good as we want to be. Um, you know, it starts with a man up front. You know, um, he got to get the ball rolling, and, you know, we are just going to follow his lead. So. You know what? I've never spoken to the guy, but I want to say that this is a big Mike McDaniel house. I've never spoken to him. I want to speak to him. I know it's early on, but what's it been like to play for and work with him so far in the early days? Oh, it's been great. You know, he's a, he's a great player's coach. You know, he, he wants the best out of his players. You know, he's a work he's a workaholic. Like he likes to work. Um, when we, you know, practice goes a certain way. You know, he likes to go in a certain way. There's a lot of meetings. You know, just to, just just to get your players ready to play, and we want to play for him. We want to see what he brings to the table. I know we haven't gone through any adversity yet, but um, you know, we're excited to play for Coach McDaniels, and we're excited to see what he's going to bring for us. That's a great point, right? Like it's easy to say right now, but adversity hasn't hit yet, and it will. Yeah. Now, like I always yeah. say this, I know you're looking ahead, and not back, but the way you guys ended the season last year was really something. The season yeah. got off to a tough start, but then you and the defense caught fire in the second half. You allowed less than 16 points per game. You went. And eight and one in the final nine games. So, in your mind, what was the biggest change last season from the first half to the second half? And then, how do you carry that over into this year? Uh, I would say, you know, it's tough when you, you know you start the season off so slow. But we kind of just talk. the thing I, I would say I'm most proud about the team, the grit. Like we never gave up. We were still out there having fun, still playing together. We knew we could turn this thing around, and we just kept fighting, fighting, even though. We we'll lose close games. I mean, we just we never gave up. We just kept 
on fighting, you know, we finally like, turned the thing around. We just kept the ball rolling. You know, from you to Xavier Howard, Jalen Phillips, a lot of talent, a lot of talent defensively. In fact, you yourself have said this group can be, quote, scary. What is it that makes this group scary? Is it that grit or is it something else? I would say it's the grit and also we know each other. You know, this is the, pretty much the same group of guys that was in that turnaround last year. But um, I would say we know each other. We know our strengths. We know what we're really good at. You know, we're going to help each other out. We're going to compete against each other, you know, and push each other. That's that's what I would say. Not a lot of teams that you say bring, bring back most of the guys, you know, they had the, the year before. How important is that? It seems pretty obvious, but how important is that continuity, consistency, being with guys that you've been in the battles with before, guys who know you, you know that guy, you know how they're going to react. How important is that consistency? Uh, it's definitely important because we are always going to keep growing as you know, as individuals, as a team. You know, knowing their family, know why they're doing what they're doing. You know, why they want to be the best. You know, what we kind of have a goal. You know, as a, as a, as a defense, I would say. Um, so we just got to keep stacking. Just got to keep getting better. Keep competing with each other, and you know, just 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 going out there and balling for each other. All right. So before I let you go, I got to ask you about this. I know that you went to the Miami Grand Prix earlier this off season. I've never seen so many guys so hyped on that before for those who've never been to an f1 race or don't know that much about the sport still how would you describe it what was that scene like oh it was it was it was an amazing feeling it was crazy you know how fast those cars those cars go you know i got a chance to go close to the race and like kind of just watch it i mean i mean it's, it's amazing it's, it, you have people from all over the world will come in and just uh you know just watch that watch the sport and it just it's just mind-blowing how fast you know those guys can go and thankfully nobody was hurt um but but it was it was an amazing amazing race i would say was that sort of kind of like a one-off experience like that was cool i like that were you now actually a fan of the sport and do you follow it oh yeah i would say this i definitely have to check out another you know foreign race because it kind of opened my mind to where i wasn't really uh big into f1 racing well, now I am a big fan of it, I would say now. <laughs> Let me ask you this finally. Did you, is it true, did you bump in to Michael Jordan around that time? And if so, how did that <laughs> encounter go? What was that like? Man, that, that was a crazy experience for me. You know, uh, you know, growing up, you see Michael Jordan on TV. You see him growing up, but you never have a chance to actually talk to him or, you know, just take a picture with him. And that kind of, like, made my whole day, you know, having a chance to actually, like, talk to him a little bit and also, you know, get a picture with him. But uh, it was an amazing experience for me. You know, I sent I sent my parents. I was like, "Hey, look, look, who I took a picture with." <laughs> but it definitely was exciting. You know, growing up, you watch guys like that. So. To kind of explain that to me before you go, I mean, you have won a Super Bowl. You were an All American. Yeah. You're having a great career. You're an elite athlete at a very high level, and you sound almost like a fan getting around this guy. Like, what is it about MJ? What makes him so different? Like, would you react to anybody else like that? Uh, I would say this. I would. I don't know, MJ is just different, you know. Like I was born in Nigeria. We we knew about MJ in Nigeria, you know. So, you know, he's just like a worldwide superstar, you know, having a chance to just meet with him and actually just shake hands or, you know, get pictured with him is like a something I would I would never ever forget because you know you grow up, you have posters of him on your wall and you just seeing him in person is, is just a different, it's mind-blowing, a different story. So. I think you nailed it. I mean, he is different. I agree with you. He is different. Yeah. I'm of that age where I covered that, and I spoke to him on this show. He and I were co-stars, Wink Wink and Space Jam. Yeah. Like, no, you're right, dude. He is different. Yeah. MJ is definitely yeah. different. Emmanuel, great to have you on the show. Appreciate the catch-up with you. Thanks for doing that. Let's do it again soon. Uh, thank you for sure. We will. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you. Good conversation. Well done.